All right, so here is your pre and post lab health for the density of beverages lab. Um, hopefully, I'll be able to give you a little bit of assistance if you're having trouble solving some of these questions. Um, the first question asks you, how many sig figs are allowed if you calculated the density using mass equals 12.53 grams and volume equals 8 0.27 milliliters. <clears throat> well, remember when you're thinking about sig figs, you just look at the numbers that are going into your equation, you choose the number that has the fewest sig figs. When you're doing a multiplication and division, you look at the whole number, um, and since this one only has three sig figs, this one has four, this one has the fewest sig figs, so our answer is going to be allowed to have three sig figs. And then number two asks us to actually calculate it. So um, we're calculating the density. Density is equal to mass over volume. Mass is equal to 12.53 grams. Volume is equal to 8.27 milliliters. Plug that into your calculator and you get in three sig figs. 1.52 and then our units are grams per milliliter. Question number three asks you to figure out the percent sugar concentration in an orange soda and they tell us a couple of things first. Let me get rid of what I just did here. <clears throat> so what they tell us is that According to the nutrition label, the orange soda has 49 grams of sugar per three hundred fifty-five milliliter serving. They also tell us that the density of this beverage, this orange soda, is 1.043 grams per Milliliter. So the question is, what's the percent sugar concentration in orange soda? Well, the percentage of sugar is going to be, you figure that out by taking the mass of sugar in the drink and dividing it by the total mass of the soda. Well, we have the first part of this equation, the 49 grams. We don't have this bottom part. But what we do have is the volume of the serving, and we also have the density of that soda. So we can use the density and the volume that we're given to figure this out by setting up a, a pretty simple little conversion. So we can say 355 milliliters is what we're starting with. This is our conversion factor. We can write it like this, like that, which means that we can take this and plug it into here. We have milliliters on top, which means we want milliliters on our next block to be on the bottom. So we put one milliliter and 1.043 grams on top. Milliliters cancel out, so you just end up with 355 times 1.043, which is 300 70 grams, three sig figs is what's allowed because of the 355. So now we can take this, this is the mass of soda. So we can take this and plug it in over here. And that's going to be equal to 13%. 13% uh, sugar in that orange soda. 13% of that beverage is sugar, that is insane. All right, so that's it for your pre-lab questions. Now we can do some post-lab questions. Let's erase what I got here. All right, for your post-lab questions, the first question asks you to draw a graph. <clears throat> They're nice enough to tell you what goes on the X, what goes on the Y, uh, and then to draw a, use a ruler to draw a best fit straight line through the data point. So your graph should look a little something like this. With a ruler though, of course, so your lines will be significantly straighter. So this is your y-axis, this is your x-axis. 
Um, going along the bottom is going to be percent of sugar sucrose. And going along the side, I'm not really sure if I can write sideways with this thing, but we're going to try, is density in grams per milliliter. Hey, I didn't do too bad. Then you'll have your numbers. Make sure these numbers are evenly spaced. Going along here, whatever they'll be. Same thing down here with your percent of sucrose. I guess you'll probably have 0, 5, 10, 15, and 20. Because those are the, you know, I'm just going to fill this in now. And then you'll have dots, you know, representing different spots. And, you know, they might, hopefully they'll pretty much follow a straight line, but they might not be exactly perfect because things in labs don't ever turn out exactly perfect. But you can see that there's a general trend going like this. So with your ruler, again, you'll draw... I want it to look like Christmas. You'll draw a best fit line just going straight through as many of the dots as you can get it. <clears throat> and then question two asks you to use this graph to figure out what the unknown sugar concentration was in the first beverage. Well, you can calculate the density. That should be in your table. So you go along here. Let's say the density fell you know, about right there. Well, you would come over like this, and then come down like that, and then whatever that is, that's your percentage of sucrose. And then it tells you to do the exact same thing for number three. Now, number four asks you to do an actual calculation, so that's what I'm going to show you how to do next. So I'm just going to use some fake data. Basically, your data will come from your lab that you did. Uh, it says calculate the actual accepted value of the sugar concentration in weight percent for each beverage, each of your two beverages, using the nutrition label information and the measured density value. So let's say we're doing um, Coke. And according to the label on Coke, there are 42 grams of sugar per serving. And that is per 355 milliliters, 12 ounces. And that the density that you figured out in the experiment from calculation, you know, mass divided by volume, that density is equal to 1.039 grams per milliliter. We're basically going to do the exact same set of steps that we did on question number three of the pre-lab. So, the, if we want to figure out the mass percent of sucrose in the solution, we need to take the mass of sucrose and divide, oh, it's doing that thing again. Sorry about that, y'all. Divide by the mass, per, uh, mass of the Coke to figure out what percentage of Coke is sugar. So again, we already have the mass of sucrose, that's 42. We need to figure out the mass of the Coke using our volume and our density. So I'm gonna show you a different way actually to work this out than I did on the first one. Cause I'm sure a lot of you are wondering, hey, can't I just use a proportion? Yeah, you can. Uh, and right now that is easier, but I'm just showing you the conversion thing with the lines and the grids, cause you'll have to use it later. So yeah, if you have 1.039 grams per one milliliter. That's going to be equal to X, our mass, over 355 milliliters. And so from here, you can see what you have to do to solve for X, just cross multiply. So 355 times 1.039 gives you 368 grams. And so that gets plugged in to this little guy. So you have 42 grams of sugar divided by 368 grams of soda. And that works out to 11%. <clears throat> and then number five, and then you do this with the other drink, whatever it was that you had as well. So you do this calculation twice. And then number five asks you to calculate your percent error. So number five says use uh, in the following equation to calculate the percent error in your experimental determination of the sugar content and or the percent error. So the measured value is what you got from the graph. 
where you did, you know, you had your graph and you said, okay, here's the density that I'm working with. If I go over, you know, here's my little line. If I go over, there's my line. What is this? This is the experimental value. So that's the number that you got in, uh, I guess, numbers two and three. And then the actual value is what you calculated in number four. So let's say the experimental value according to the graph worked out to be 11.1%. And then our accepted value according to the question that we just did was 11%. Those numbers are really close, but let's see how far off they are. So you take um, accepted minus experimental or experimental minus accepted. It doesn't really matter. I just always tend to take big minus little. Divide it by accepted and then take the absolute value. That's why it doesn't matter what order these guys are in. And multiply that whole thing by 100. So you end up with 0.1 over 11 times 100, which actually works out to 1.0. So we had a 1% error, which as far as I'm concerned is excellent. If you have any more questions about how to do your pre-lab or later on you have questions about how to do your post-lab, you know how to find me.